This is a Bailey Pageant Monarch, going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got the hitch, jockey wheel and handbrake. And we'll demonstrate to this to demonstrate this to you in person here on site. Front locker, you've got your gas bottle, gas regulator and gas valve on top of the van. Anytime you turn, anytime you turn the gas on on the van, you need to open up the gas bottle, then press down the gas valve on this side, which will allow the gas flow through to the caravan. Turn that back off for now. On the bottom of the regulator, you've also got a yellow shut-off valve here that you turn 90 degrees and it'll allow you to shut off the gas going past the regulator to the inside of the caravan. Then got your wind-down leg on this side of the van, which is there for stabilising the caravan. You'd never use it for lifting the caravan. Um, and like I said, you just stabilise the van with that. The same as the one on the other side, so you put a slight amount of pressure on them as they go down on the floor, but you wouldn't lift the van any further than that with those. Water heater vent and the heating system vent, you need to make sure this, reco this cover is removed before you ignite anything on gas inside of the caravan. You've then got your water pump connection, which very simply pushes into the side of the van. The pump will drop down inside the aqua roll itself, um, and then you'll fill the water system from the inside, which will demonstrate once we're inside of the van. The wheel nuts will be torqued prior to the caravan leaving site, so they've been tightened correctly. And then we have the two fridge vents above. Uh, the two fridge vents are there to allow hot air at the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air into the fridge itself. So your fresh water goes in down here as we've seen. Then down here we have the uh, water, uh, water pipe outlet pipes. So essentially these water pipes are there to allow the water that's been through the sink and the showers to come out the van. You'll have two bits of grey pipe that go into the larger circle diameter holes and they'll also drop down inside or they'll drop down inside the waste master for the caravan. On the rear of the van, you have your toilet flush tank. It takes three and a half litres of water in here and a capful of the pink fluid prior to use. Then in the bottom, you have your toilet tank itself, which you remove by pulling up the yellow handle at the bottom. The cap, uh, the flap inside is not actually shut off at the moment, so the, the neck here will turn out to tip the waste away. And on the back of here, you have a yellow pressure relief button, so you can empty the, or take the pressure out of the tank before you tip the waste away. Like I said, before you use that tank, you'll put one litre of water in and a cap full of the blue fluid. On the rear of the van on either side, you've got your wind down legs to stabilise the caravan. Um, and again, you'd never lift the caravan with those legs. Come down the door side, you've got your battery box with your, with your 110 amp leisure battery in there and your mains power lead coming into the side of the van itself. As long as you've got power connected to the van, then you'll have 240 supply coming in. Um, and as long as you've got your 12-volt battery on, you'll have 12-volt lighting on board the van also. Going inside the van, a very simple to use caravan, this one. As you come in the door, on the left-hand side, you've got your master power switch, which you need to have on for all the 240 and 12-volt systems to work, your internal lights, your awning lights, and your water pump. Now, the water pump, I'll come back to in a moment. I'll demonstrate how that works. So, first of all, to fill the water system, you're going to need to make sure all the taps are open on the caravan. As you can see, I've already filled the water system on this particular van, so it's all ready to go. We open all the taps up on the hot side of the water heating. I'm just going to shut them off, because obviously, like I said, I've already done that. We open all the taps up. You'll come underneath the seat on the front right-hand side. And just underneath this seat, you'll see a yellow valve. That yellow valve is the drain-down valve. So when that valve is parallel with the floor, you'll be able to fill the water system on board the caravan. And if that valve is pointing upright towards the bottom of the seat, it'll actually drain all of the water off the system on board the caravan. So to fill it, like I said, parallel with the floor. So with that valve parallel with the floor and the taps all open on the hot side, you can then come over to the water pump switch up on the wall. Normally it'd be in the up position when the water pump's turned off, so you put it in the down position. And when you open each tap or open all the taps up or once all the taps are open, a little red light here will appear to let you know there is the pump is running as it should do. But say also there is a voltmeter at the top here, and as you can see, the battery is charging off the 12 volt system as we speak. So water pump on. With all the taps open, the water system is going to start filling up. Once that water system is full, you'll have water running out to every tap continuously on board the van. Once you're at that point and the water is flowing completely, you can turn all of the taps off and you'll be able to start thinking about warming the water on board the van. So we have two options for warming the water. You have gas and electric. So down here on the floor underneath the seat, you have your two options. You've got your 
two four, uh, 230 electric water heater. So actually 230 mains. So at the moment, as you can see, that is on. So the water system will be now warming up on electric. If you haven't got uh, mains power available, then you can use the gas control here. So think of it as a water store, not an electric store. Uh, ultra store, sorry. To get the gas system to ignite, as long as the gas bottle is turned on in the front and the and you've bled the gas system through to the hob. The hob is the last point on the gas system. So before you ever ignite anything on board the van, you make sure that cover's removed on the outside. And you also just get the gas through to the hob first, just so you've got gas to every other point of the van. To turn the gas supply on, you'll flick it to the gas symbol on the side here, the grey dial on the outside. And the green light in there indicates it has ignited on gas. Now the gas bottle isn't turned on at the moment, as you saw from in the front locker, so it will actually fail to ignite in a moment, and you'll get a red light appear in a couple of seconds. But when it does ignite on gas, you can control the water temperature between 30 and 70 degrees of water temperature. Now essentially, whatever numbers above the green light is the temperature that the water system is going to warm up to. Do also advise that when you're showering on board the van, you use the gas as a boost to help the water system warm the water up quicker, because the 230 on its own isn't quite as efficient or as quick at warming up the water. Like I said, use the gas dial here to warm the water system up if you want to shower on board the van at all. Obviously when you're done, we do advise that you turn both of these off. Um, so when you're not essentially using the caravan because if they were left on and there was no water in the system, it could actually burn out the elements inside the tank. So that is your 230 and gas operation for your water heater. Next up, we're going to go to the heating for the caravan. So on the opposite side of the van over here, you have two dials. You have your main power switch for the heating that you need to turn on to get power to this switch above. And this is the control for the electric heating. So down the side here, you'll see there's 500, 1000 and 2000. So essentially, depending on what site you're on, you'll select the correct amount of power that you've got coming into the caravan from the site you're on. So here on site, 500 watts. You can then control the temperature of the heater on the dial in the centre here. Here, higher you go over this dial, the hotter the, water, uh, the heating will be. Now, like I said, it will depend on what caravan site you're on to what power supply you can run this on. If you ask the site office when you arrive on site, they will be more than happy to advise you of what power level to run your heating and hot water systems on. Obviously, the more amount of power that's going through it, the more efficient the heating system will be. You can also run your heater on gas, so you've got this dial on top, you spin round to the gas position, just here. Press down the gas valve, with the gas turned on obviously. And then when it does ignite on gas, in this window down the front, you'll have your pilot light. Once that pilot light is there and it's running, hold down the gas valve for a further 5-10 to 10 seconds, then slowly release the gas valve and control the temperature of the heater on the dial on top. Now with this particular van, you can use blown air heating also. So around the van, you'll notice you've got these little white vents, a bit like you've got in your car. And you can control the fan speed of those on this dial on top, as long as you've got the blown air turned on. So the dot in the centre here indicates the heat is going to come out the front of the heater. The wave symbol on the left hand side is continuous blown air. So when you put that wave, put the switch over to the wave symbol, if you've got the heating turned on or even if you haven't got the heating turned on the fan system will kick in and it will start blowing whatever air is in that system whether it be hot or cold air around the system but that's continuous on the a on the right hand side it'll essentially kick in and out like a thermostat so when the thermostat kicks in the hit the blown air heating will kick in if it cuts out then it will cut out very simple to use and again you can control the fan speed while you're using it on the automatic blown air the fridge system on this van, again, very simple to use. So a control on the left hand side that controls the power source you want to use. So as you can see at the moment, we've currently got it on 240 mains. And on 240 mains, you control the temperature of the fridge on the dial on the right hand side. If you want to use 12 volt while you're towing down the road and you're connected to the car, you can spin the dial around to the 12 volt option. And that will essentially allow you to use the fridge as a cool box as long as you've got the right connection on your car. You can also use the fridge on gas, and to do that, you spin it around to the gas symbol. Hold in the temperature valve, then in this window just here, you have a little red line at the bottom, which is essentially your pilot light. When that red line goes around into the green, then the fridge has ignited on gas. Again, a bit like the heater, once it has done that, you'll hold down the gas valve for a further 5-10 seconds, then slowly release the valve. 
and you can control the temperature of the heater on gas on this dial on the right hand side. Cooker, hob and grill all work very much the same as your household appliances, no differences at all there. Into the bathroom now. You have a pump flush on the toilet system, so you pump the flush up and down to pump the toilet system. You have a full indicator light for the toilet waste cassette under the van. That will illuminate red when the toilet cassette is full. And down the front of the toilet, you have this gray waste handle, which when it's shut will be in this position. And when you're using the loo, you'd have it in this position. And when you are finished using the loo, we do advise that you shut it back off so no smells come back up inside the van. The toilet seat itself turns for your convenience, as you can see. And we do advise, and again, you, do, you will need to point the toilet seat straight across towards the shower unit when you are emptying the toilet waste cassette from under the van, as it has two lockout tabs on there that will basically hold the toilet cassette in place if the toilet is turned at all. The idea is, is that if the toilet's turned and the cassette's been used, then um, you can't remove the cassette. So that is the Bailey Pageant Monarch. If you have any further questions on the van, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'd be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here on site when you collect your caravan. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.